جی ناظرین دل اپنا پاکستان کے ساتھ انتخاب احمد آج بیر کریک پارک میں ایک یہاں پہ پروگرام ہوئے ہے اور گلوبل ویلیج فانڈیشن کے تحت ان کا موٹیو ہے ٹوگیدر ویکنڈ ٹوگیدر ویکنڈ ٹوگیدر ویویل انہوں نے ایک بہت اچھا پروگرام آرگنائز کیا یہاں پہ اس کے ہم آپ کو کبریج دکھائیں گے دل اپنا پاکستان باقی سب لوگوں کی طرح انڈیجنس کمیونٹی کے ساتھ ہے اور ان کی جو فیلنگز ہیں اور ہر اس کمیونٹی کی جو کہ اپریس ہوئی ہے اس کے ساتھ ہیں اور ہم انسانوں کا ایک قبیلہ ہے جو کہ ہم انسان جو ہیں اس کے لیے اپنی فریڈم کے لیے اپنے حقوق کے لیے حق مانگتے رہیں گے ہم آپ کو اس پروگرام کے حصہ دکھائیں گے پیرا گل نے دل اپنا پاکستان کے لیے ایک بہت اچھا پیغام دیا ہے بہت بہت شکریہ ان کا بھی تو دیکھتے رہیے بینکور کی جان دل اپنا پاکستان ناظرین دل اپنا پاکستان کے ساتھ انتخاب احمد آج یہاں پہ یہ اور گلوبل ویلیج نے جو ٹوگیدر ویکنڈ ٹوگیدر وی ویل کینڈل لائٹ اور ایک انفرمیشن کا پروگرام یہاں پہ کیا ہے انڈیجنس کمیونٹی کے ساتھ ان کے ساتھ سولیڈیاریٹی پہ اور یہ ٹریز پہ ریبن باندھے گئے ہیں یہ اس کی نشانی ہے کہ یہاں پہ لوگوں نے جو ان کا درد ہے اسے فیل کیا ہے اور اسے پین کو فیل کیا ہے دیکھتے رہیے ونکوور کی جان دل اپنا پاکستان ہے دل اپنا پاکستان دا اے پیارا شو ہے جو بہت دیر تو ہوں آج کئی کنٹیاں تو ساڈی کبریج کر رہے سو اسی ہونا دا خاص تنواد کر دیا آج دا ایونٹ پیار نو بکرون دا سی پیار نو ایک دوجہ دے بچ ونڈن دا سی دوسرے دا درد سمجھن دا سی سو اسی اس ٹی وی پروگرام دا تے نا دے پیڈیوسر دا بہت تنواد کر دیا تے آور گلوبل ویلیج دا جڑا موٹو ہے ٹوگیدر وی کھین ٹوگیدر وی ویل اسی کٹھے رال کے بہت کچھ کر سکتے ہیں تے اسی کٹھے رال کے اس سب کچھ کران گی اس ساڑا موٹو ہے سو ویڈ دات وی آل تینک دا ٹی وی شو اور وی ویش ایوری ون دات دے ویل ٹیک ایس ٹیپ فورورڈ ٹوورڈز این انکلوسیف کانیڈا تینک یو We can't think enough because I think sometimes it takes just maybe one group to kind of take a one step forward and as uh, Daljeet was saying, many more um, sick riders, um, sick motorcycle club even recently went again and I think it's okay to be second, it's okay to be third, it's okay to be the tenth person or hundredth person to go say that we care. It doesn't have to be the first person only and then saying okay, it's okay, it's been done. As it's getting emotional, I just wanted to make sure that today it is so nice that I reached out to Gary Thandi and uh, he's been running this organization with basically a counseling um, services which, uh, uh, which provides services on a very just reduced rate. And I asked him, I go, could you please help us? Because as the people would come here, there might be somebody who needs some emotional help. And then would you please help? And it was so nice that he was able to send us five counselors. Thank you, Meera. Uh, salam. Uh, may peace be upon you all. Uh, this is the way we greet. This is the way we uh, welcome. This is the way we uh, say the beginning. Salam. And uh, good evening to you all. I would like to acknowledge that I am standing on an unceded tra traditional territory of the Ketsi, Semi-Aimo and Quantlin. On behalf of my organization's Committee of Progressive Pakistani Canadians, myself, I want to pay my respect to the elders, past and present. But here we are all together, standing in harmony and in solidarity because what happened to the Indian people has happened to us. We have that feeling, we have that understanding that this happened. But having had it happen does not mean you have to be defined by what happened. Everyone dies, but it's the life that you lead that will define you. And so we look to our brothers and sisters uh, of, the, of the indigenous community to define yourself in every level of society that we all live in. We want to see an indigenous prime minister, a premier, a mayor, a councillor. We want to see that. 
Thank you. And we want to see that amongst all of us, all of our communities. We're obligated. It's our responsibility. Mike in here and talk to you from heart to heart. She will speak how the Indigenous community is feeling and how we can collectively move forward. Big round applause for Cecilia Riti. It is so powerful when we can just sit and listen to each other. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of background. Um, my dad was five years old and he was sent to a residential school when he was five. He spent 10 months at that school and at the end of June, my grandpa, my grandpa came and picked him up. My dad said, there's bad things going on in that school. I don't want to go back. My grandpa, hereditary chief in our community, took my dad and hid him out on the land. Allah, Akbar Allah. Pakistan brings you Canadians with roots in Pakistan and features community information and entertainment. The Nazin Canada ki history mein indigenous logon ka art jo hai wo kafi ahmiyat ka hamil hai. तो उनकी जो आ, आर्ट है उसको ये शक्ल दी गई है यहाँ पे बियर के एक पार्क में और ये देखते हैं कि क्या लिखा हुआ है विंग्ड लॉयन विमेन का स्टैचू है ये और ये बियर क्रीक का बनी बियर क्रीक पार्क में एक बनी जो है आराम से फूड खा रहा है सिर्फ किसी किस्म की फिक्र नहीं है कि कोई इसकी वीडियो बना रहा है दिल अपना पाकिस्तान का ये प्यारा शो है जो बहुत देर तो आज कई घंटे तो साड़ी कवरेज कर रहा है सो असी उन्होंने खास धनवाद करते हैं आज का इवेंट प्यार नू बखरोन दासी प्यार नू एक दूजे दे बीच वंडन दासी दूसरे दा दर्द समझन दासी सो असी इस टीवी प्रोग्राम दा ते ना दे प्रोड्यूसर्स दा बहुत तनवाद कर दिया ते आवर ग्लोबल विलेज दा जेड़ा मोटो है टुगेदर वी कैन टुगेदर वी विल असी कठे रल के बहुत कुछ कर सक दिया ते असी कठे रल के उस सब कुछ करांगे इस आधा मोटो है सो विद दैट we all thank um, the, the TV show and we wish everyone um, that they will take a step forward towards an inclusive Canada. Thank you. Thank you. For all of us, especially the Sikhs and the people who are my age, they've gone through the 1984 and the 1990s and it was pretty much the same genocide feeling that they had and what we have gone through. So on the first week of June when we heard about that, we reached out to the band out in Kamloops there and told them that we want to come and <laughs> share their uh, be part of their feelings. So we sent out the notice to all our members and quickly the word spread too. It wasn't just the Sikhs who were there, but all the uh, all the riders from out in Kelowna, Kamloops, Karamas and all over BC, they joined them. And on the same day, there was a truck rally also that was organized by the truck logging truckers out from Prince George Williams Lake, Osois, Oliver, and that area. What happened was when we were organizing this rally, when we stopped in Merritt, there were lots of other motorcycles from other communities. Help me, help me, help me. Monty, a guy, he was an indigenous guy. He was a grandson of one of the chiefs who came and met us and said the prayers out at the gas station in Merritt. And he had very strong words for us. He said, up till now, we as an indigenous community has felt lonely and we had felt alone and we did not know there was anybody standing beside us. And they said, we are very humbled and we feel proud 
that you guys have taken this step and we are not uh, alone anymore. So it was very emotional and this guy was out in tears. He said that there is somebody so we went out to Kamloops there and there were literally people lined up on the road there with their this slogan welcoming us and all the riders out there and the truckers and when you went out into the school it pretty much felt it for the Punjabi community I am from this state Fadegar Sa it reminded me of Fadegar Sa it was like those nikke nikke bachche jade othe dabbe hoye si you kende si thank you to si sanu lab le we have been buried we have been playing hide and seek for such a long time that thank you for finding us so it was very emotional there were tears in our eyes and there were tears of the in the eyes of the people who were greeting us and we had the Rosa and the chief out there in Kamloops she met us too and it was pretty much a humbling experience for us and I think the best thing to do in this situation now is we should go out and learn more about the other communities even your neighbors same thing that we talked about at the Kentlo Vision what happened out in Toronto to bridge the gap we believe in integration instead of segregation apne gwandi nu milo puchho unna di gallan baatan puchho kaun kehde dharm to a kehde religion to a that that's the only way we can have a one good very well bound canada and that's all i have to say thank you um we can't thank enough because I think sometimes it takes just maybe one group to kind of take a one step forward and as uh, Daljeet was saying, many more um, Sikh riders, um, Sikh Motorcycle Club even recently went again and I think it's okay to be second, it's okay to be third, it's okay to be the tenth person or hundredth person to go say that we care. It doesn't have to be the first person only and then saying okay, it's okay, it's been done. As it's getting emotional, I just wanted to make sure that today it is so nice that I reached out to Gary Thandi and uh, he's been running this organization with basically a counseling um, services which, uh, uh, which provides services on a very just reduced rate. And I asked him, I go, could you please help us? Because as the people would come here, there might be somebody who needs some emotional help. And then would you please help? And it was so nice that he was able to send us five counselors. And I'm gonna invite all five of them to please come onto the stage. And they, because they do represent um, different ethnicity, ethnicities and also from the different linguistics uh, background, they will come and introduce, and I think that's the part of our global village, that we welcome everyone. We realize that we're part of a bigger picture and part of a bigger family. So I'm going to invite all of you guys to please come onto the stage and one by one introduce into the language that is your language that you appreciate and that you connect with. Thank you. Thank you, Nira, for inviting us. And, you know, our global village, we are all one. So we represent Moving Forward Family Services. We're all counseling therapists. And we're here to support you, anybody who needs to talk to us. We are over there. We have some information brochures. We provide services in different languages. So um, we're here to just to talk. And I do want to say something to my Indigenous family here that we're bringing with you. You know, while I was growing up here, um, it's a shame that it wasn't talked about as much as it should have been. And it kind of hurts me as a person what happened. And we all grieve together. So it's a privilege to be here with you. Um, so let's go. First of all, I'd like to thank Mira for giving this platform and arranging all these services. Uh, I'll address everything in Punjabi. I saw that like indigenous people faced with respect to uh, like their children, 
जो काम लुक स्टफन देखने मिले आ एंड सेवन फिफ्टी वन केसेस जेड सब कैच रेंज मिले आ इट्स रियली हार्ड टू नो एंड आई डोंट हैव वर्ड्स टू से एनी थिंग मतलब आप ग्रीफ कर भी वर्ड्स नहीं आना दे सो वी फ्रॉम अ मूविंग फॉरवर्ड फैमिली सर्विस वी आर हेयर वी आर इंटर्न काउंसलर्स एंड वी कैन जस्ट सपोर्ट दैम आप उन्होंने सपोर्ट कर सकते हैं लाइक जस्ट लिसनिंग टू दैम एंड अगले का दर्द सुनना और उन्होंने समझना यह सब तो वही गल हों इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग कि आप दुख में कि महसूस कर सकते हैं वो जो उन्हें महसूस किया उस टाइम पर वो की सी और वो सुनना बहुत वो गल हों कि सपोर्ट करने इमोशनल सपोर्ट करने सो वी एज एज अ इंटरन काउंसलर फॉर मूविंग फॉर मूविंग फॉरवर्ड फैमिली सर्विस आप एक सपोर्ट ग्रुप बहुत सारे सपोर्ट ग्रुप्स ऑर्गेनाइज कर रहे हैं अपनी एजेंसीज दे आर लाइक पंजाबी वुमेन ग्रुप पंजाबी मैनस ग्रुप दैन वी आर हैविंग वी आर ऑल्सो हैविंग इंग्लिश वुमेन ग्रुप इंग्लिश मैनस ग्रुप सो दैट कि आप डिफरेंट कम्यूनिटीज चो लोगों समझ सकी एंड जिस तरह लाडी वीर जी ने कहा कि दिस इज अ टाइम जिथे आप डिफरेंट लोगों रीच आउट करने की लड़ है मे बी इट्स आर नेबरस सो इट्स वेरी इंपोर्टेंट कि आप अपनी कम्यूनिटी तो बहर निकल के लोगों की जो प्रॉब्लम्स ने मे बी इट्स इंडिजनस पीपल और एनी बडी इन योर नेबरहुड वी नीड टू मूव फॉरवर्ड वी नीड टू रीच आउट एंड लिसन देयर ग्रीफ लिसन टू देयर हार्ड टाइम्स सो वी आर ऑल हेयर वी आर ऑल हेयर टू सपोर्ट यू इन वट एवर वेज वी कैन एंड थैंक यू सो मच मीरा वंस अगेन फॉर गिविंग दिस ऑपरचुनिटी टू अस एंड ऑफकोर्स ग्रेट प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर अस टू address or listen to the issues the people are facing these days thank you so much कोशिश कर रही हूँ नमस्ते पहले बार मैं धन्यवाद करना चाहूँगी मीरा जी का उन्होंने हमें ये टाइम दिया आप लोगों से मिलने का बात करने का और इसके अलावा मैं सिर्फ इतना कहना चाहूँगी कि दुख किसी को देख के नहीं आता कि इस कम्युनिटी के लिए आएगा कि उस कम्युनिटी के लिए आएगा बुरे वक्त पे किसी बुरा वक्त किसी पे भी आ सकता है और दुख किसी पे भी आ सकता है और हमारा काम यही है कि हम आप लोग के दुख को सुने उसको महसूस करें और आपके साथ हों आपके दुख में हाँ एक काउंसलर का यही रोल होता है हम किसी की लाइफ से दुख हटा नहीं सकते पर हम आपके साथ आपके दुख पे महसूस कर सकते हैं और शायद इससे आपको थोड़ा हल्का महसूस होगा और यहाँ पर हम मूविंग फॉरवर्ड में आप जैसे कि मैं अब हिंदी में बोल रही हूँ तो अलग अलग भाषाओं में हमारे पास काउंसलर्स हैं जो भी लोगों की मदद कर सकते हैं तो किसी को भी किसी तरह का सपोर्ट चाहिए तो हमारा मूविंग फॉरवर्ड का बूथ है यहाँ पे कुछ भी आपको क्वेश्चन पूछने हैं कुछ भी सवाल है आपके पास तो आप हमारे पास आ सकते हैं और एक और चीज़ मैं कहना चाहूँगी कि काउंसलिंग जब हम किसी से बात करते हैं तो हम कहते हैं कि काउंसलिंग आपको ज़रूरत लगती है तो आप कहते हैं कि मैं मानसिक से कुछ भी मुझे कोई तकलीफ नहीं है मेरा मानना है कि ये किसी मानसिक बीमारी का इलाज नहीं है काउंसलिंग काउंसलिंग एक जिम की तरह है हम हेल्दी होने के बावजूद भी जिम जाते हैं ना एक्सरसाइज करते हैं कि अपने आप को हम फिट रख सके तो काउंसलिंग में हम अपने मन को फिट रखते हैं तो किसी को भी किसी तरह की जरूरत हो तो आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है उसमें और हमारे को मिल सकते हैं आप आके और कोई भी क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं धन्यवाद大家好，啊，我也是代表Moving Forward 希望在这里大家能够集聚所有一些能量能够帮助他们度过这一段时间而我们这些治疗师呢都在这边可以为你们服务谢谢 Thank you I asked all of them to speak in their mother language for a reason One it is that indigenous community especially Uh, the children who went into the residential school, they were deprived of the language. Um, so that was the message to say that we all love our language, our mother language. 
And second message was moving forward, they have counselors in various languages, they can help you. It's an association that can give you up to e easily four free sessions. I know that some of the people that are sitting here from the community that I also belong. And even when I went through depression, I did not know what counseling was, but it took me some time and some courage and some humility saying, you know what, woman, enough dealing with it on your own, go talk to someone else. But I can tell you, I counseling counseling. counseling. to So it is, I just wanted to make sure that. Uh, that I introduce these fine women, fine, fine counselors who are here to tell you that they are here for you as the global village, saying that they can provide the service into the language that you understand because there's so many nuances that only if you understand the language, only then you understand the grief in that in that capacity or in, in the depth. So thank you so very much. These ladies are there. Please do not hesitate to take their card and as I said, sometimes they provide easily three to four sessions free and for the low income, they provide long term, totally free counseling. So anybody who's here, please take the and on, my, on our behalf of everyone, please do thank Gary for us. Thank you so very much. Big round of applause for the ladies doing the heavy work here. Before we go forward, I do have another sensitive part that I want to go into, but I wanted to say I wanted to show everybody that we have these orange ribbons. Uh, we understand the purpose. There are also orange uh, masks for everybody. Anybody who wants to take it, there is a free mask for anybody to take and please do. They're on that side. Even now or before going to, um, before going for the evening, you can definitely collect that. But now before, uh, I was going to invite Cecilia to come in here, but before that I want to invite Tuma Shoeb to please come onto the stage. She's the president of the Urdu Association of Canada. And not only just that, but she she has been representation representative of the of the women from the Pakistan community, Pakistani community. So I have a, I had asked her to please come and join me on the stage while she will introduce uh, the uh, will uh, will introduce the next guest in here. I have asked her to take a couple of minutes and just say how she's feeling and what the community is feeling at this point. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mira, and thank you. Global Village for organizing this event. It is a very heavy event. I'm feeling very sad. My heart is heavy. Um, the residential schools, being an educator, I don't even feel like calling them schools because schools don't come with graveyards. Schools are there for learning. And they are responsible for educating and teaching good morals. So I I don't know if I'm okay with calling them residential schools. Also at the same time, today, when we are mourning for many, many indigenous students, many indigenous school kids, we are also mourning for a family that was attacked by a person just because they were Muslims. The family that was attacked because they were visibly wearing Muslim attire and the entire family was killed. This happened in London, Ontario. That's not okay. And thank you so much that we are all here from all different communities to in solidarity and that's the only way we can reduce this. That's the only way we can stick up together for the right and justice. Um, so I am going to invite Furkan Maiman is a 12-year-old student. First of all, to represent the students, the children, that every child is important. And also, Furkan is going to do the Islamic prayer. Call for prayer, it's called Azan. Azan is called when Muslims are invited for Salah, for prayers. But at the same time, Azan is called when people are in fear, when 
they are they feel that they are unsafe so right now we are finding out how fearful it was and we are finding out how we everybody is feeling unsafe at the moment so omar maiman is going to come and recite azan in memory of whoever that are not here with us allah akbar allah Allah. Next, I am going to invite Maulana Shahriyar to recite prayers. That is also called dua for the deceased. Hello, Assalamualaikum, Allah, everyone. I'm just quickly going to supplicate for all of the indigenous community, First Nations, and for the London family, and for everyone who has suffered in this world. So please join me. We normally raise our hands. Um, we don't need, uh, don't clap at the end as well, but uh, whatever I say, um, the best way to join me is by saying Amen or Amin if you can pronounce it properly. Please join me. I'll start off with sending salutations in Arabic. Uh, we normally do that as a tradition, and after that, I'll uh, commence it in English. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka Hamidun Majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. O Allah the Almighty, here we are standing, standing on unceded land, and we, our previous people before us, have oppressed the people that used to live here, and then the discoveries are being made day and night. The bodies are being found. The families have been traumatized. Their families have suffered. We can offer them no word. 
We can't offer them, we can't offer them proper condolence. Oh Allah, oh the Creator, oh the one who has created us, we ask you and we beg you and we beg you with the most humility as much as possible from a human being that you please I was listening to the azan and the prayer I had tears in my eyes and I'm just thinking what is it this is the religion that I did not know I thought I did not know but every word that was said every every sound that I heard was mine every word that sounds like I have heard it somewhere this is these are my words these are the things that my ancestors have shared so I'm not sure what are these divisions about anything that the indigenous group has shared and any of the things that uh, this group has shared from on behalf of the London family, I find this is what all have been hearing and believing. So I'm so glad that today we're, to get, we're here together to take this next step forward in bringing back uh, the, the unity that we, we needed. And I think people before at one point always knew how to welcome other people. Something happened in between when the division started going deeper hatred was something that started is been perpetuated compared to the love that what i had seen before coming here honestly when i was a young child always i thought it was love it was just acceptance that was something that i had seen around me and as i came in here from the last few years i have been hearing lots of division on on basis of religion on basis on basis of different territories and so forth and I think it's awakening that uh, we need to step forward and we need to go back to the sense of belonging with each other and now I invite you now I invite Shahzad Khan to the stage here um, he represents the committee of Pro progressive Pakistani Canadians I can tell you Shahzad I've known him for over 20 years and he has never um, uh, held his support, held his voice. He has never been quiet when needed to be said something. He had never um, stepped back when somebody else needed healing. He's always been there, I think, within communities, not only with the Pakistani community, but anything that had happened locally here is one of, we need more of Shadzads and, and more of such community activists who can step forward outside of the community that they're familiar with. Um, so with that, I invite Shahzad to please come. He recently um, held a very powerful event, um, and and that is where I got introduced to this young man who did uh, azan here. So I thank Shahzad for that. Um, so Shahzad, please come here and share some of your thoughts as to what your committee thinks as to how we can progress forward. What are the feelings that the community is feeling, and what are the next step forward that all collectively we can take? Thank you. Thank you, Mira. Uh, salam. Uh, may peace be upon you all. Uh, this is the way we greet. This is the way we uh, welcome. This is the way we uh, say the beginning. Salam. And uh, good evening to you all. I would like to acknowledge that I am standing on an unceded tra traditional territory of the Ketsi, Semiamo, and Portland. On behalf of my organization's Committee of Progressive Pakistani Canadians, myself, I want to pay my respect to the elders, past and present. Before I speak further, I would like to, first of all, uh, thanks to Mira and our Global Village for organizing this event. It's an event to share grief. It's an event to share solidarity. It's an event to share uh, the strengths that we have as together. When we are together, this is the strength that we are looking for. This is the strength that we are aiming for to deal with this racism, racism of different kinds of racism, whether it's Islamophobia, whether it's hate crimes against Asians. You please console their families. You please remove the traumatization that which they were affected with. We cannot do that. Oh Allah, please, please protect them, protect their families, protect their land, protect their children, protect their health, protect their wealth. And also, wherever human beings are suffering all across the world, O oh Allah, we ask you that you protect them, you guide them, 
O oh Allah, you removed the oppressor and removed the oppression from the human human ma mankind at large. O oh Allah, especially especially for all those people who are currently still suffering at the hands of oppressors. O oh Allah, you guide the oppressors, you soften their hearts, you remove that difficulty from the people who are being oppressed. O oh Allah, grant them prosperity, grant, grant them health, grant them wealth. Especially a recent incident uh, which is taking place in London, Ontario, our London family. Three family, three generations have been wiped out, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, please, people who have these wrong ideas, people who have these wrong misconceptions, people who learn their knowledge from different and bad sources, O oh Allah, O oh Allah, you guide everyone. O oh Allah, whoever has misconceptions, remove that misconception. Who has wrong information, O oh Allah, you remove that wrong information from their hearts, O oh Allah. Soften their hearts so we can live in peace and tranquility. Just like at the time our, our Prophet in Medina, where all the Muslims and non-Muslims and everyone, they lived peacefully, they coexisted, they accepted everyone's different faiths and they accepted the diversity. O oh Allah, we ask you that in entire Canada, entire world at large, you know, you, uh, you make people live in a way that they're accepting towards one another. They accept, they accept each other's faith, they accept each other's attitude, they accept each other's culture, they accept each other's values. Not only do they accept them, O oh Allah, they should also respect each other's cultures, each other's faiths, each other's values, and no one should suffer at the hand of any oppressor, no one should face any discrimination, no one should wait for, you know, face any, any atrocities. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, O oh Allah, please forgive all of our sins, please forgive all of our shortcomings, the sins that we committed openly, the sins that we committed secretly, the sins that we committed at daytime, the sins that we committed at nighttime, the sins that we know of and the sins that we've forgotten of. Oh Allah, we ask you to forgive all of our sins, our minor sins, our major sins. Oh Allah, if we have hurt anyone in any way, we ask you to forgive us. Oh Allah, we ask you to forgive us. If we have harmed anyone in any way, oh Allah, we ask you to forgive us. O oh Allah, at the end, I ask you that you guide us all, guide us to the right path, the path that leads to happiness, prosperity, tranquility. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat yamna yasifun, wa salamun ala al-musaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimeen, ameen. Ameen, ameen. It's a hate crime for me and the Muslims. Any kind of hate, any kind of racism, we are here together to make our strength. So first of all, I would like to invite uh, a kind of elder brother to me and to many of our community, uh, Harun Khan. Harun Khan is a trustee with Al Jamia Masjid, Vancouver, one of the oldest mosques in British Columbia. Not in Vancouver, but the oldest mosque in British Columbia. And uh, he's past president with Pakistan Canada Association. And as I said, he's just like elder brother to me and uh, many like me in the community, respected Harun Khan. Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The blessings of peace, the blessings of blessings of being with one another today. I too make acknowledgments that we are standing, living, and being together on the unceded territories of our indigenous brothers and sisters. And for that, we thank you. We stand here today, we're gathered here today uh, in solidarity and in love to grieve with you, to be with you, to bond with you, to learn from you and to give of ourselves to you, because we are all one. Now, my dear respected brothers and sisters, um, the discoveries at the residential schools, while horrifying, are not surprising. The many generations that the Indians, and especially the children who were torn away from their families, it was done to kill the Indian in them and save the boy or girl. 
because they wanted to mold those children into the fashion that was accepted by the colonialist settlers that governed this country. And this colonial centrist mindset has gone on. We are of, uh, from the, the diaspora of the Indian subcontinent. I'm from Pakistan, you're from India, you're a Hindu, you're a Sikh, you're a Muslim. We're all one people, all living together, yet we were all pitted against one another and still are to this day. But here we are all together, standing in harmony and in solidarity because what happened to the Indian people has happened to us. We have that feeling, we have that understanding that this happened. But having had it happen does not mean you have to be defined by what happened. Everyone dies, but it's the life that you lead that will define you. And so we look to our brothers and sisters uh, of, the, of the indigenous community to define yourself in every level of society that we all live in. We want to see an indigenous prime minister, a premier, a mayor, a councillor. We want to see that. Thank you. And we want to see that amongst all of us, all of our communities. We're obligated. It's our responsibility to go and do something. We can't just sit back and go, oh, it's very bad, so sad, and then go back to our home, go back to our neighborhood, go back to our people. You cannot stay silent, nor can you be so silly, so stupid, so foolish to do nothing. Because if you're not part of the solution, you are part of the problem, and a problem is to be silent. A problem is not to say anything. You got it, brother. We got to say something. You got to stand up for something. If you don't stand up for something, you're going to fall for anything. This is a reality. This is a reality. So we have to stand up for each other. This is who we are as people, as human beings. It's our responsibility. And we'll take it seriously. Those little kids that die, those little kids that they're going to find by the hundreds will come into the thousands. Those little kids who had nobody and we're going to go and take them to our hearts and we'll welcome them and remem remember them in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. They are not alone anymore. They are not. And our Aboriginal brothers and sisters, before I came here, when I arrived here, Sister Mary, she gave me the smudge. She said, take this smoke. Take this. This is our, this is our tradition. May you bring the smoke up so that you can hear better, so that you can see better, so that you can bring it to your head, you can think better, that you can bring the smoke up to your mouth and you can speak better. Bring it to your heart so you can feel better and you can feel with your heart the struggles that we all have and to know that we are all one. So thank you, Sister Mary. Thank you, all of you. My dear respected uh, brothers and sisters, I would like to thank the organizers, Sister Mira Shazadbai, thanks again for inviting me. To each and every one of you here, uh, we're here in the heat, but look, we're surrounded by the trees. We're surrounded by the foliage, we're under the chop, the shade, the, sh the shade of this beautiful land, this beautiful country. I'm not wearing my shoes because I wanted to feel the earth under my feet. You know that, uh, uh, to, to feel it, to, to go and draw energy from it. And that's one of the amazing things here, that every part of this earth, we are part of. So let's be a part of it. Let's be with one another, to live with one another. You look at these rocks. These rocks are painted all these beautiful colors, representing something. Let these things represent healing, and let this day represent not just a time for healing, but to understand one another, and let's do something for one another, in love and in solidarity. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Wow, how so powerful. And there was a reason that everyone from the community that I had spoken to, they said, please invite Haroon. He will speak for us. He will speak from the heart. He will speak from exactly what, how everyone is feeling, not only for the community, our community, but also how we are feeling for the indigenous community. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, before I invite the next guest, I just want to let everybody know that we, Cecilia, um, 
a good friend of mine that I did a degree with in SFU. And um, I asked her, she has indigenous background, and I said, well, I need somebody who can speak from the heart, and I do not know who to reach out to. So Christine said, okay, here's the woman. If you want to hear from the heart and you want to hear how the community is feeling, this is the woman. So with, with great honor, with great pride, with great respect and love, I invite Cecilia Riki to please come join us here on the stage, on this mic in here, and talk to you from heart to heart. She will speak how the indigenous community is feeling and how we can collectively move forward. Big round of applause for Cecilia Riki. I like to get a little comfortable and be able to move around. So, hi Chika for having me today. Um, I've got a lot of thoughts going on in my head right now. My heart's heavy, but I also have a lot of hope in my heart. A hope because of each one of you who have come here today. Yos, Cecilia Kalisanugwa, Gekalin Smolitsie, uh, so Cecilia is my English name. New Yanzitz, Extriquia, Gekalin, Samotie. My traditional name, New Yanzitz, Extriquia. I come from the High Slough First Nation, Northern British Columbia, near Kitimat. And um, <clears throat> after listening to all the amazing speakers and the youth who have been such a big part of today as well, um, it's very profound for me and I think what I'll do is just share a little bit about my family story because I think when we share stories we connect with each other um, and I could talk all about the statistics and I could talk about what happened which is usually my job when I work in schools in Langley um, but I'm going to bring it back down to just personal stories because it is so powerful when we can just sit and listen to each other so I'm just going to give you a little bit of background um, my dad was five years old, and he was sent to a residential school when he was five. He spent 10 months at that school, and at the end of June, my grandpa, my grandpa came and picked him up. My dad said, there's bad things going on in that school, I don't want to go back. My grandpa, hereditary chief in our community, took my dad and hid him out on the land. And my dad was given the foundation of our language, our culture. Our, he learned how to hunt. He learned how to fish. He knew which fish came up the rivers, at what time of year they came up. He knew that Mount Robson actually had a different name. We have to think about the landmarks that we have in this country and where did they come from and who gave those names and why do we have those names? And perhaps we need to look at the indigenous communities and rename a lot of British Columbia and beyond that, Canada. Um, so my, my dad lived on the land with my grandpa for four years. My dad had a really good foundation of his culture and his identity. At the age of 10, my dad was taken to the Alberti Residential School. The Alberni Residential School is on Vancouver Island. My dad was sent over 700 kilometers away from his home. He was only 10 years old. Anybody here 10? Anybody here 10? Just stand up for a sec. 10 years old, my little granny lost her baby. Thank you. When we are talking about the numbers of children that we're finding right now, I want you, instead of thinking of them as children and as numbers, 215, 751, however many more there's going to be, I want you to reflect and think about every single one of them as somebody's babies. When we have babies, it doesn't matter how old they get, they're still our babies. I have a 34-year-old son and a 30-year-old son. They're still my babies. If we can connect through that, through the power, we're going to unite. We're going to come together. We're going to sort out this history. What happened recently with the discovery of the 215 
which indigenous people have known forever. This is not a surprise to us. Our stories, we pass on our history through storytelling. It's not written down in books, but it's the non-indigenous people who need the concrete evidence. So when the scans came up and they identified 215 babies in Kamloops, the country awoke. You're here today because you awoke. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here today. I can't teach you the whole history in 10 minutes. But what I can ask you to do is to learn the history. The history is documented now. We know the history. So I'm gonna challenge each one of you to learn the history. I also understand, especially for a lot of communities, that the country of Canada has changed. The viewpoint of the country of Canada, how we see Canada has changed. Canada is a beautiful country. But what we need to do is to have the indigenous people have equal partnership in this country. True. Very important that we do that. We're not on the sidelines. We don't want to be on the sidelines. We want to be in government. But it will look different in my point of view. And we'll sort all that out going forward because we don't have the answers today. If you're looking to Indigenous people for the answers, we're in grief. We're grieving. Our hearts hurt. Our hearts are heavy. I think it's really important that we understand uh, what we do here and what we've been doing across the country. It's symbolism. When we lower the flags to half mast, that's symbolic. Never in this country of Canada have the flags been lowered with the direction that it's going to be indefinitely for now. Amazing. Never been done in Canada. Because we know there's more work. So there's no point in putting them up yet. The artwork that's been offered for you to participate in. And then they're going to go around the park as a reminder as to what happened. Is so important. The orange shirts that we wear and, and the ribbons that have been given out and the orange masks, that color represents the students who went to residential school. And it began by a lady who I call a very dear friend of mine, Phyllis Webstead. And Phyllis Webster was a little girl, lived in the interior in Williams Lake. And she was going off to what she thought was school. So her little granny saved all her money. And she bought her this beautiful, shiny, orange shirt. And she put it on the first day of school, and she boarded the bus, and off she went. And when she arrived at that school, they took her shirt away. And they put her in a uniform. That shirt was her connection to grandma. And all of a sudden it was gone. And so when Phyllis, through the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, told her story, as so many survivors did, um, out of that came Orange Shirt Day. So Orange Shirt Day, we normally wear our shirts across the country on September 30th. So keep that in mind. September 30th is the day that we acknowledge residential school survivors. But because of the findings of our babies, the Orange Shirt campaign has really come to the forefront again. So it's very important that we wear orange and we know why we're wearing orange. I don't want you to just put on orange if you don't understand the story. So learn the story, understand the history, um, I would say for me, I live in Langley, and um, I think for most Indigenous people today, we can say that we don't feel alone, that we don't feel alone, that there's a shift in Canada. And I think some people are really struggling because through the schools, predominantly it was the United Church, the Anglican Church, and the Roman Catholic Church that ran the residential schools. 
And so for those of you that are of that faith, they're really struggling with guilt. And what I say to them is don't feel guilty. If you now know what happened and the role of the institution, then I want you to call the institutions to account. So what I'm doing is calling the institutions to account today, and I have been calling them to account, RCMP, Ministry of Children and Families, the churches, the government of Canada. We need to hold them accountable. It is so important because it's part of the healing process. And what people have to understand is we're not angry. I'm not angry. I could live my life in anger. I could be mad about all of this, but I'm not. I'm sad. I'm sad that I need to be here and share the true history of Canada. That makes me sad. But perhaps in a couple of years, you won't need me here. Perhaps in a couple of years, it will be your youth who will be teaching and talking about Orange Shirt Day and how it's so important. So, um, you know, my dad, people often ask me, what would your dad think? As a residential school survivor, hereditary chief from my community, a leader, a loving dad, my dad had a tough life. He had demons that followed him from a 10-year-old little boy all the way through his life. And he ran from them for a long time, a long time. In November, I got a phone call. Your dad wants you. He's asking for his girl. He always called me my girl, my girl. So I got on a plane that night and flew home. And I sat with my dad. My dad was 90 years old and he passed away on December 3rd. It's only been a few short months to grieve a dad, to grieve this history. One of the things I'm really concerned about is that with losing survivors, we're gonna lose the stories. But then the intergenerational survivors are gonna step up like me to share the stories of our parents and our community, which is so important that we understand. But it takes strength. I'm tired. I'm tired. But then I get hope when I see this community come together. When I see the Sikh Motorcycle Club go all the way up to Kamloops in support. We can all do things. Simple things. It doesn't have to be complicated. Don't overthink the process of reconciliation. Don't overthink it. And it doesn't have to cost a lot of money, and it doesn't mean a lot of organization, organizational skills. It means recognizing and showing your support and just listening. And just listening and being respectful. You know, in our indigenous communities, I was sharing over there, in our indigenous communities, our youth are uh, brought up to look after our elders, to go around and serve our elders. And to watch the youth here today, there's a few there, they went going around with water and juice and asking if we need anything. So wonderful. We are all just people. As my dad would say, we are all connected as brothers and sisters. We're all connected. Let's not let race divide us. Let's not let race divide us. We need to stand together, not just with Indigenous people, but the family from London, newcomers coming to Canada who might not feel so safe. We need to do this together. This is hard work, but it can get done. My vision for Canada is that I get to walk alongside you, and you get to walk alongside me. That's the vision, without making one more important than the other. Because if we start doing that, then we're going to fail again. Can fail again. So we just hold each other up. I'll call you my brothers in the back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Heidschka CM. We spoke a little bit about clapping and when do you clap and how do you what do you do? So uh, when um, especially after like a song is shared or a prayer, we don't clap. We raise our hands. We raise our hands like this. 
And that's just a show of respect. So when I raise my hands to my brothers over there, it's a show of respect. Um, and then we don't need to clap. So, Haichka, Sifisian, is thank you. And I want to thank you for having me here today. It's been such an honor. Thank you. <laughs> so we learn, and we learn, you know, just... Uh, we, we learn. Sometimes we learn and we forget and we make mistakes and I think as humans, it's okay. It's important to make some safe, if some safe spaces. It's okay to have this kind of gathering and make a, make a mistake. Clap on a song, a song when we did not know and then learn from it. And then having to forgive and ask some of those questions that we have been told about each other. And then break that stereotyping. And having this safe space is important. Now uh, we have a couple of um, speakers left. Uh, before I move forward, I want to have everybody big round of applause for Cecilia. I'm going to invite Manjeet Baines to please come onto the stage. She is a lead on the Women Wing um, on the Chetna organization. This organization has been doing profound work. Big round of applause for Manjeet Baines. Thank you, Mira. Thank you all. I would like to start by expressing my gratitude for being able to stand on this land in solidarity on the unceded territories of Kwantlen, Kachi, Samyamu, and the Tuasan First Nation territories. Thank you. I would also like to thank Goval Village and everyone who come here to show your support. My name is Manjeet and I am Women Empowerment Committee Chair for Chetna Association of Canada. On behalf of Chetna, I would like to condemn strongly the action and the abuse for children in residential school across Canada. Such actions have resulted into the darkest and the most troubling chapter in the history of Canada. We stand in solidarity with our Indigenous brothers and sisters and communities of Canada. This is also a very shameful reminder of the systemic racism, discrimination and injustice that the indigenous communities have faced and are still facing. It is not surprising that these residential schools, where they should have been playgrounds, there were actually cemeteries. And we also continue here about these kind of racism all over the Canada. My heartfelt condolences to the Muslim community in London, Ontario, and to the young survivor of the London attack, as well as the many other victims that face Islamophobia. On the behalf of Chetna Association, I would like to say, we need to educate ourselves to stand against any injustice, against any human being based on caste, religion, creed, color, sex, and any other um, things. So we need to stand for the justice. And also I would like to uh, thank Mira again for giving me opportunity to speak few words and also pay our tribute and respect to the survivors and the victims of all kind of discriminations. I would also like to thank all the organizations that have come together and arranged this event. Thank you all for standing for the solidarity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mira. Thank you. I feel bad. I think it's about time I invite all the directors um, uh, to this site so everybody would know and they can speak their name. Otherwise, they only know of my name and they're inviting. They're thanking me. It is a collective work of everyone. Mild Dismira Gill is just a name of an individual which is part of a much bigger organization and much more group and much more thought process as to where we want to go. We just have um, um, if Aftar Gill um, is here, I would like uh, him to please come onto the stage. And with that, we are on the concluding time right now. Um, so just wanted to ask everybody, we have these candles here. We're going to ask the indigenous community to first light them. There is going to be a sanitizer sitting there, so please use the sanitizer. And then light the candle, and then there is this tree right here. Please tie this orange ribbon 
onto that tree and you can you might have to put couple of the the ribbons together to tie it so let's see if you guys can all work together and by one by one and keeping the social distance Okay, it's Gurpreet is saying it's on it's on us it's on this way. Uh, I think I just lost the they had to go. They were telling me and I was trying to. So the last thing that I wanted to go was have Teresa come back again and there is a medicinal um, circle that we have made with these rocks. There's two things we would like to to do with the rocks. Either all of the all of you guys can take the rocks that you have made and put it into your own garden and remember them. Or please come with us after having the pizza and we will go put these rocks into uh, the bear. Through this heat and that today. So with one of our teachings and that, we honor all four directions. So when you had heard Wally, when he did his prayer, he acknowledged all of the directions going from north and then to east to south to west. Each of those have a different teaching. Also, each comes with a different color representation as well too. So when we acknowledge those that are in the north, the teachings and that that go with it, it's also we're acknowledging our children. So when our children and that are born, you start into your childhood phase. Then you're going into your adolescence, then into being an al uh, to an adult, and then going into being an elder. We have four seasons, spring, summer, winter, and fall. We have many, many, many different teachings in with this medicine wheel. So each color is a different representative. So red is usually represent representing the indigenous community, the red race. Then you're going into the yellow, which is usually a, a significance for our Asian brothers and sisters. And then when we, well, this is the little number of colors. So we usually do black acknowledging the black nations. And then we also use white, uh, honoring those white nations. So it depends on, there are teachings that are here in BC, there are teachings that are into the um, Prairie Provinces, so North and South, into Canada and the United States. So we each home have a little, little bit of different teachings about the medicine wheel. So when we lay down these rocks, this is a sacred place. These are sacred teachings that go with it. So what you're doing, you're, go, you're going to the ancestors, you're honoring Mother Earth. So. With that teaching, um, there is also another medicine wheel that you may want to even take a look at. So if you guys are familiar, down in Newton, behind the recreation center, there is a community garden and there is a medicine wheel there as well. People can go down there and pray, even if you want to lay your rock there. You can take a representative that here to take home with you or as Mary had mentioned, over into the garden. There are even how the garden is set up. It's acknowledging different races and with plants. So even going into the cedar grove, cedar tree like the one that's over here, are very, very significant in that to us here as First Nations people. That is our medicine tree. We harvest the bark in there that would make any of our regalias and information. We use the medicine in our smudging, we use that medicine and boiling in a pot in our home so because it creates a, a more positive energy. So we, um, we honor all of the plant life and that that goes with it. So the seasons go in through our medicine wheel, our healing journey. I'm not gonna, part of this is flying off my head here now because I'm having a, a heat meltdown. Forward, light a candle and um, take a rock and tie a ribbon, tie a ribbon around the tree. To us, trees are very sacred because not only does one tree, you plant that seed, it grows, it grows roots. Those roots can go on for miles and miles because it'll connect to the next tree. It'll connect to this tree. It'll connect to this tree. That is one of the Earth's largest organisms is the root system of a tree. So as part of that tree, this, this planet here is filled with many beautiful, wonderful cultures. So. We are all connecting to help each other grow. So, you know, thanking Mira for everything for this for this event and that today. As hot as the 42 degrees got, um, it's been it's been a wonderful day. And we feel the love. I'm glad you're here to hear the stories. There are many, many, many stories. I work with our elders in our community as well too. They're hurting, but you know what? 
In order to fix something, you'll have to break that wound. You have to get the pus out. You have to let it heal, and it'll heal stronger than what it was before. So that's what's happening when we deal with racism, discrimination, harassment in all of our communities. So thank you. Come forward. Seeing that in the communities, these things still happen on the streets. You know, it's not, it's not right. And we do have a connection. All of us have a connection. It's called being human. And when you're human, you hurt. When you're human, you laugh. You feel bad for other people that are not your race or your religion because they're hurting. And that's what we like to do. Not like to, but that's what we do. And that shows us today, you guys all coming out here today and helping us you know, moan our, our, our grief right now. Is, uh, yeah, we'll share it all the time. Call us if you need us, I'm saying. And, uh, yeah, Creator, we give thanks for this day and all days. We give thanks, Creator, we're able to come here and see our community come together with us. It's the first time I've no noticed this. And, 71 years old, you know, and it's got to be coming more and more and more, which it is. But we give thanks for this this opportunity to come here and heal with somebody, and we know what they're going through when they're hurting. So we ask Creator we all walk in a good way, for this will be eternally grateful. Oh, Matakiasi, Kazi, Nikwich, all my relations. पाकिस्तान का यह प्यारा शो है जो बहुत देर तो अज कई घंटे तो साज कर रहा है सो असी उन्हों का खास धनवाद करते हैं अज का इवेंट प्यार बखरा प्यार एक दूजे के वंडन का सी दूसरे का दर्द समझ का सी सो असी इस टी वी प्रोग्राम का इन्होंने प्रोड्यूसर का बहुत धनवाद करते हैं तो आवर ग्लोबल विलेज का जोड़ा मोटो है टूगैदर वी कैन टूगैदर वी विल असी कट्ठे रल के बहुत कुछ कर सकते हैं तो असी कट्ठे रल के वो सब कुछ करा ये सा मोटो है सो विद दैट वी ऑल थिंक द द टी वी शो एंड वी विश एवरी वन दैट दे विल टेक अ स्टेप फॉरवर्ड टूवर्ड्स एन इनकलूसिव कैनडा थैंक यू नजरीन दिल अपना पाकिस्तान के साथ इंतखा अहमद आज यहाँ पे ये 
our global village ne jo together we can together we will uh, candlelight or ek uh, uh, information ka program yahan pe kiya indigenous community ke sath उनके साथ सॉलिडेरिटी पे और ये ट्रीज पे रिबन बांधे गए हैं ये इसकी निशानी है कि यहाँ पे लोगों ने जो इनका दर्द है उसे फील किया है और उसे पेन को फील किया है देखते रहिए वैंकूवर की जान दिल अपना पाकिस्तान